So right now in this video, I'm just gonna show you where my aquaponic system is at right now before I start changing some things up. Since I do have some plans I'm gonna do with like plumbing and moving some grow beds and doing some other things. So right now this video is just gonna be showing you or basically it's gonna kind of be like an update of where the aquaponic system is at right now before, as I mentioned, before I start changing things. So just to show you that. So here we just started the entrance. If you've seen my other videos, you would have seen this section already. But basically on the outside, I do have shade cloth, which I will kind of upgrade the design on that to make it easier to roll up. I do have a roll up curtain here. I need to install the zippers again and improve that since the stickiness of those things comes off. So that's stuff I will have to do. Then the door has magnets on it just to give it a nice and easy close. And then in here, I basically have my fish over there and all the growing space over here so on this floating raft area i have all my basil which has been harvested like four times already and keeps growing and now we have too much so i might just reduce all the basil to like one little section or we'll see because i have sold a few of it to some friends and stuff and then over here this was also a floating raft but since i'm preparing I just uh, took the rafts out, disconnected it from the aquaponics system in general, so it's the use I've been had is out, out of commission, and I just have the water running from those filters over until here, just so this is getting the circulation and all. But right now, there's just crayfish and some fairies moss mixed with some duckweed, which I feed to the bluegill. So on this side, I have another one of my fiberglass grow beds. So I have three of these fiberglass grow beds, which I got lucky to find. I got them on Craigslist quite some time ago. So basically for my entire aquaponic system, I've been collecting material over a period of four years, I believe. So I was able to find these luckily secondhand. So on this side, I have it mixed with lava rock and hydroton. Preferably, I would want to have the whole thing filled with hydroton just because it's easier to plant, it's easier to remove things from, just overall easier on the hands. However, it is expensive buying this stuff new versus this is relatively cheap to buy which is nice so and it does the same purpose the only difference is this i can stick my hand down into easily and this well unless i want to get my finger shredded then it won't work out too well but right now on this side i have some celery that i moved from the floating rafts over there then we got the last piece of taro that I have in here. So I used to have a giant taro right here, which was open. Had this whole section open since it grew quite big. So this is the taro I have right here right now, just in case I decide to keep growing it, since we did I did harvest the taro root and it was very delicious. So we'll see how that goes. And then I have moringa over here. The yellowing is most likely from a lack of iron or some other sort of nutrient that I haven't added into the aquaponics system yet. But you can see that Moringa does do well in aquaponics. This is a lot taller and a lot more leaves than my mom was able to grow outside. Well, if you do have the weather, then it's fine to grow it outside. But for us, it gets colder during the winter or too cold during the winter for this particular plant. So that didn't work out too well. And then we have some Egyptian spinach or Morahea right there. Harvested quite a bit of that already. I have my giant bell or media guard. I haven't hooked up a bell siphon into this yet since I still have to change some plumbing for that. Then on this side I have another three media grow beds. These are both bell siphons and this one is a constant height where I have watercress and then this is also a curry plant. I as well rescued this from my mom since well she had it for like two years and it wasn't working out. And Surprisingly, it does excellent in the aquaponics system, which is cool. And down here, I have my sump and my external pump. And then there's another kind of sump area down here, which I do have fish from. So all the water from these grow beds right here and that grow bed all come into here first before it goes into the sump tank. And then these two directly went into here. Well, this one went first into that one via the U-siphon and then from this one, into there so we'll see i might actually turn this whole thing into just a media bed but we'll see when i get to it which should relative be relatively soon so we got our sump temp, sump tank so and from the pump i go from the pump through this temporary pipe up to the fish tank which i have over there 
you've seen my previous video, this stand right here is a plan for a breeding setup kind of thing. That's still need to get to that as well. But the pipe goes into here where I have this 500 gallon tank that I also got used. Well, pretty much this whole greenhouse is built off of used material. It's just a matter of waiting and collecting and you'll be able to find all the things you need which you get lucky to do so. So in this tank I have bluegill and a catfish in there and then there are some hybrid fish which is this guy right there that guy right there which I need to take out because they do kind of pick on the bluegill just haven't been able to catch him so when I drain it down when I do some maintenance I will be able to do that and then I got four IBC totes one two three four so typically the IBC totes you find are 275 gallons these I took some time to search for these are actually 330 gallon IBC totes the only difference is they're a little taller so I decided to get that because one they take up the same space as a 275 but you get more gallons because of the height difference which is nice so I have four of those then we got our filters on that side and on this side so this basically whole side won't change well besides the plumbing but those filters won't change. I still have to finish setting up the insides of the filters. But on this side for these filters, they will be kind of moved around. Well, not these two, more of these two. Uh, but that also depends on what I, what I decide when I get to the maintenance area. I also have some more fairies moss growing in here. It's quite thick. And then I also just put this on here. That will also be connected via the plumbing. And then from here, go directly into this filter. So this might just be a display for some cool fish. We'll see how it goes when I do get water running in it. And then here I have, so I have a few different kinds of fish. I got blue tilapia in here. Some more bluegill here, bluegill here. I got some Mozambique tilapia in here. We got some red now tilapia in there. And then in this one, there's catfish, some bluegill, some blue tilapia, and I think a bass. That's what I have in there. But you can see that is relatively the entire system as of now. So there's still a lot I have to do. Basically involving insulating things, redoing the plumbing, moving some grow beds around. Well, mainly just moving this grow bed and replacing that sump tank, which is the idea. But again, we'll see. So for the plumbing, just to show you what I have now, as I was mentioning, the pipe goes from there via an inch and a half pipe up until here. And then I have two three inch bulkheads on both sides of these tanks. So basically, depending on the flow rate of your pump, basically the gallons per hour, you will need to have the output from your gravity fed tanks a lot bigger than the intake, otherwise it will overflow. So from here, so basically if I was to turn off this valve and have all the water into here, that two inch from here to there and into there wouldn't be enough. So I need the four inches on both sides. Otherwise this will overflow. So anyways, that the pipe goes in there and then overflows into these, these two tanks. And then I have solid lifting overflows in here, which is right there, going down there. See those bluegill. And then connected via this pipe to here and another solid lifting overflow goes from there into here. Same thing on that side. Goes into there. Uh, this was for someone else. Solid lifting overflow and then over there and a solid lifting overflow. So I will be changing most of this plumbing to make it more efficient and more effective. It is not a bad design but there is always ways for improvement. So I'll basically have all these tanks on separate lines. So if I wanted to turn one of them off or have one of them empty, I have that opportunity or that ability to do so. So each of these will have water entering in them separately from the pump. And then I also have drains connected on all of these to some pipes that I'll have running out of the greenhouse, maybe to some tanks or something out there where I can do like some compost tea or some extra fertilizer tea, which I can use for the garden and stuff like that. Same with the plumbing from these filters. They'll all be connected to that as well. On this side as well, same thing. There'll be another uh, drainage pipe going out that way. Kind of sucks to have to redo things because I have to buy more valves, 
spend more time moving things and basically getting rid of what I did before. Just drag, but if I can make it more efficient and more effective and maximize the usage of the space I have, that would be ideal. So still a lot to do. And you can see I still have to insulate all these tanks. So after I do the plumbing, I'll get some more of this insulation insulated around here. I need to get some more of this and insulate this big tank here. This insulation I got for free, which I was lucky, but I haven't been able to find any, so I have to get some, buy some to wrap around there. And then this side is kind of shaded off, mostly. That's 90% shade cloth versus the shade cloth I have over here is 50%. That way to give this area less sun, because the fish don't need that much sun. And then the more sun, the more algae growth will get in there. And then this shade cloth will come off as the winter comes along. It's more for the summer, because during the summer it gets quite hot in here without that shade cloth, like over 140. Well, I don't even know what it gets to, because this thing only goes to 140. If I can focus. So if it's over when it's right there, it could be more than 140. Another thing I'll be doing as well is also improving the aeration I have which is going to these grow beds I mean to this uh, floating raft grow bed and to some of the fish tanks so what I'll do is I have a bigger what is called a regenerative air blower which I'll hook up and do some all plumbing that has pipes going to these tanks just in case I need to turn them off without or turn the pump off and just have the air in there or if there's a power outage I can just hook up the air pump so the fish will be fine I'll do some venturis though so that while the pump is on I'll have air through there but there'll be air stones going down into each of these tanks that I can hook up or turn on or leave on if need be just to give the fish an extra source of oxygen and to have more water movements in there so the water can circulate better through there. I also have to have air hooked up to this filter over there and possibly two filters over here for moving bed biofilters. Since this is a radio flow filter and then moving bed biofilter and same on that side, radio, radio flow filter, moving bed biofilter, or will be a radio flow filter and a moving bed biofilter when I'm able to get that plumbing hooked up. If you do have any questions or comments, just leave them below. If anything was unclear in the video, just comment below and I can try to answer them. I probably won't be able to show it because it will be changed by the time. Or maybe you can show it, we'll see. But basically that was just pretty much this video, which is just showing you how the aquaponics system is doing right now, where I'm at. and. Some of the things I do have to do or will be doing later on. So that's pretty much all for this video. If you haven't done so already, remember to hit that thumbs up button, hit that notification bell, and subscribe. And thank you for watching.